Sol Cresta, one of the most hyped new shooters in a long time, thanks to being designed and developed by Hideki Kamiya in Platinum Games. The studio behind cult classics like Bayonetta, Wonderful 101, and Nier Automata. In an age where nearly all new shmups are developed by very small indie devs, it's big news when a major studio takes on the challenge, especially to revive a classic like the Terra Cresta series and create a worthy sequel. So does Sol Cresta live up to the hype? Is it worthy of the Platinum Games name? We're going in depth to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And boy, is there some ugly. So are you, but we love you anyway, right? Oh, Wait, hey! I'll show you how it performs on the Nintendo Switch, input lag and frame rate, including why you'll want to play it in Tate mode, like you see behind me, as well as the presentation, graphics, music, and gameplay. Even the optional dramatic story mode DLC to see if that's something worth the extra cost. So let's jump right into it and start out with what, in my opinion, makes Soul Cresta stand out and is its best feature, the unique gameplay. The gameplay mechanics in Soul Cresta are deeply complex with a steep learning curve. Ignore them and attempt to play casually, and you won't get very far, nor have that much fun. It's the equivalent of playing a fighting game just to button mash your way through. No, to enjoy Soul Cresta, you need to explore first and learn the moves. And I'm going to quickly help you make sense of it all. First, the good news. The controls are simple, as you only have two buttons really. Three if you count auto fire. One button for both shot and held down for a charge attack. And the second, your formation change, which is the meat and potatoes of the game. In Sol Cresta, you have three ships. And changing formations is what opens up all sorts of different shot types and special attacks. Many of the items, obstacles, and enemies can only be destroyed by a certain shot type. Strategy is the name of the game, so you'll be swapping through shot types and formations regularly throughout. Simply pressing the formation button slows time, allowing you to position your ships into the shot formation you want then pressing it again to accept. Your front ship determines your main shot type, while the middle affects your charge shot. Pretty simple so far, right? But you also have special formations that you collect throughout each stage, each with their own layout and attack. Every one of them is useful for certain areas and bosses, but the most useful is the series staple Phoenix. Once you've collected all the formation icons, it unlocks the invincible Phoenix, letting you clear normally very difficult areas with ease, and take out bosses much more quickly. It's so powerful in fact that it makes other formations almost obsolete as there's really no penalty for spamming this attack as often as you can recharge it. The trick though is that collecting all the formations isn't so easy, as the later stages get really hectic, so the Phoenix is like a reward for managing to get them all and unleashing your true power. But wait, there's more. On the right, you have your Sol Gauge, which slowly fills and powers up your ship as you kill and collect points and medals. Not only speed and attack power, but also combo moves you can use, giving you more powerful forward and rear shots. There's even a useful defensive circular burst by rotating your pad 360. These combos work much like they do in Cotton 2 and take some practice, but are generally much easier to pull off and forgiving of your input. Doing so in the heat of battle though is another story, and you want to keep filling that gauge for extra lives and other bonuses, which you'll definitely need as the game progresses. Sol Cresta pulls no punches and comes after you hard, so using every tool at your disposal isn't an option, it's a necessity. It is however offset by a very forgiving damage and shield system which allows you to take a licking and keep on sticking. Shield icons are generous and you can stock up to a few. Once they do run out, each hit removes a ship and you only die once your last ship gets hit. But the game is always throwing power-ups and replacement ships your way. Survival is always a matter of holding out just a bit longer to grab a new ship and some shields. And your collected formations remain upon death. Yes, Sol Cresta does get hard, and if you're unprepared, it'll chain death your weak ass, like the worst kind of Gradius Syndrome. But once you get the hang of the mechanics and quickly powering up, you'll realize what once seemed unfair isn't at all. Another aspect I really enjoyed was the game's approach to progress and continues. Basically, there aren't any. Once your lives are up, it's game over. Instead, you get a stage progress system where you can continue from any level you've reached with a new set of lives. So if you reach stage 4 and then game over, you can now try stage 4 again with a new stock of lives. Got to stage 5 and died? Now you can start on 5. 
It forces you to at least complete a single stage with a set of lives before moving to the next. A great way to practice and slowly progress. And in the settings, you can even up your stock of lives to five if needed. On top of that, you can adjust the difficulty modes on the fly. Is stage five just too hard on normal? Try it on easy or very easy and go from there. You're not locked into any difficulty at any time. So there's a good way to practice for all skill levels. I'll be honest, the gameplay is where Sulcresta really shines. It's platinum games through and through, and will remind you of their other releases like the wonderful 101, where the mechanics are tough to master, but once you do, you're looking at a really fun game. The auto fire is well implemented, so you can hold it down while using the regular shot button for your charge, easily releasing it without interrupting your auto fire. Sol Cresta is also long, taking nearly an hour to run through all seven stages, each with a mid and final boss and two stage sections, along with a final boss and then escape sequence that I don't want to ruin, but is one of the coolest in a shmup to date. Playing on normal, the game gets absolutely hectic with a lot of bullets and obstacles to contend with, but how much you get out of it is how much you first put into it. Trying to slog your way through these long stages by just dodging around and shooting and not collecting formations or using any of them isn't only no fun, but eventually impossible. The game just gets too hard without it as it should, but just like Bayonetta or Wonderful 101. Put in the time to master your moves and Sol Cresta is wonderful to play. Sometimes getting the right formation can feel a bit clunky and is a bit of a challenge in the heat of battle, but that's part of its risk reward nature and becomes easier with practice. Despite the game throwing so much at you on normal mode and above, there's so many mechanics to take advantage of. A certain bullet pattern or set of obstacles too brutal to dodge through? Slow down time with your formation and deal with it that way. Or focus on collecting all your formations quickly so you can take advantage of the Phoenix by becoming invincible. Even the scoring is based around your ship positions as all the bonus items and rings give you more points when the right color ship is in the lead. So the game becomes about constantly juggling your ships to maximize your score total. And as you progress into later loops, you start dealing with suicide bullets that'll force you to up your strategy and formation game that much more. As you play and activate achievements, you unlock extras such as a sound test, a five minute score attack mode, and more that I haven't found yet. So there's plenty of content to unpack. In terms of gameplay mechanics, this is easily an 8.5 or even nine out of 10. And Platinum should be commended on the unique and excellent work. Oh, how I'd love to tell you that all is well with Sol Cresta, and the presentation lives up to the deep and nuanced gameplay, but the results have been front and center since you started watching. The music is, of course, fantastic. How could it not be with Yuzo Koshiro doing the honors? It complements the gameplay perfectly, and each one matches the stage and theme. It's the visuals that simply leave a lot to be desired and makes you wonder what went wrong. Was everyone working on the game wearing rose-colored glasses? Nobody spoke up and said, hey, maybe we should revisit our stylistic choices here. While some have called it hideous, I wouldn't go that far. I do love the old school 2D digital pixel art look. Even the very recent Grand Cross renovation pulled it off exceptionally well while giving it a modern touch. But here, everything looks a bit flat and uninspiring. While I do like all the homages to Terra Cresta's various enemies and bosses, and I get the exaggerated retro look in motion, somewhere along the line, they took a wrong turn at Albuquerque and ended up in Rancho Cucamonga. Not once while playing the game was I impressed by what I was seeing, with a rare exception of a boss or two and definitely the excellent finale. Because the music is banging and the gameplay is so fun, the graphics simply became serviceable and disappeared for me, as in just okay at best, I guess. So while I think the harsh assessment from some is a bit extreme, I will say that the graphics don't even come close to matching the majesty of the soundtrack or the deep gameplay on offer, and leave it at that. Because yes, the music is banging. There is, however, a bit more to the presentation though, and that's the dramatic mode. 
An optional download for those who want more than just some hard shmuppet, and like a side of story to go along with it. Unfortunately, while the text is in English, the voiceovers are, of course, only in Japanese. At least for now. So reading the constant banter throughout each stage while playing is best for a friend watching while you play. The stages are also laid out differently and better suited to the story, and much, much longer. You're looking at closer to a two-hour experience versus the arcade mode at one. If this is a feature you're interested in, I definitely hold off on paying an extra 10 bucks, at least until there's actual voiceover options for your language, as you're not otherwise getting much out of it trying to read while also playing the game. I will say that it's a lot of voices and content, pretty much filling the entire stage with banter and story. So if you do speak Japanese and want to try it out, you may get a lot more out of it with a couple hours of voice and story. Final caveat on the presentation depends on your console of choice, as the Switch version needed some more time baking in the oven, and is full of performance issues and general glitches. Not only did I measure the input delay on the shot at approximately 9 frames, but the overall frame rate can drop into the low 50s and remain that way for some time. There's also some pauses in the game, mainly prior to a boss battle and every time you die, where the game just stops for a moment. That's also not to mention the scrolling, which can be quite choppy at times if you look for it. Sometimes on purpose, but others, not so much. It's definitely clear that the Switch is struggling to keep up, and while it didn't stop me from both enjoying and completing the game, you'll very likely get a much smoother experience on Steam or a PS4. Now there is a silver lining for Switch fans. Thanks to Mark MSX from the Electric Underground for finding this, and I've now verified it myself. The Switch version performs much better in vertical tate mode, to the tune of 3 to 4 frames better, averaging in the mid 5s for me. That's quite a difference. While not everyone has a way of rotating their TV, you can at least play it handheld that way. So for the price, the Switch version definitely needs some patching and optimization, which I do wholly expect to happen at some point. But if you're going to buy now and have a choice, I'd probably opt for a different platform. So what is Soul Cresta really? It's a really cool game and a sequel worthy of the series. But the graphics are a letdown and it needs more time baking in the oven to fix gameplay glitches. It feels like it needed the release date pushed just a bit longer to iron that out. I've never been a huge fan of the series in general, with arguably one of the best in the series, Terra Cresta 2 on the PC Engine, being just above average overall, but not spectacular for me. Which means, in terms of gameplay, Soul Cresta is actually my favorite of the bunch. Platinum Games took the Formations concept and expanded upon it well, creating a new game that's far deeper and complex than those that came before. More importantly, when learned and played on its terms, it's the most fun in the series for me. It's not perfect, but neither were the prequels. The levels are quite long and can drag a bit, making a full run quite the marathon. And because the game has loops, serious players trying to run it a few times through are in for a crazy marathon session. But for every misstep, Soul Cresta is also a really fun and challenging game with some excellent music. It's almost like no other shmup you've played before, really, experimenting with the formation and combo skills. So if it is a game that you've been hotly anticipating, and you find some charm in the visuals or can look past them, I have no doubt that you'll enjoy your time with it. It's not on the level of polish like M2's recent GGLS to 3, or Success's excellent Cotton Rock and Roll, which are both 9 out of 10 new shmups that perform flawlessly on all consoles. But if you're all about the gameplay and want something wholly new and experimental, Soul Cresta showed me a good time. A massive thanks to Weeb Nerd Gaming who helped make this video possible, as a recording Don't. error rendered part of my personal footage unusable. So this video almost didn't happen. He was kind enough to let me use footage from his 1cc gameplay and bring you this review without delay. Give him a subscribe 
subscribe as he's not only a really talented player, but just a good dude that's always helping people out and contributing. And if you're looking for more cool videos like this on shmups and arcade style gaming, there's plenty more to check out right here.